Where are you off to today? Elimas grimaced. I've got a job to do outside the city, and then I'm lighting the bonfire. You should know that, Mavis, if you paid attention. The druid bounced up beside him on her toes, her hands clasped behind her back. At least she was wearing boots, Elimas noted with a cocked eyebrow. She had attired herself in her own fashion, which involved a confusing amount of buckles and straps. Elimas was uncertain how any of her adornments set her apart as a druid. She did, however, paint her face, which he supposed would have to do. A little way behind Mavis stomped her golem. Several children had already spotted the creature and latched onto it, grabbing hunks of mud from its bulky body and hurling them at one another, laughing with glee as the pieces slithered back to rejoin the rest of the monstrosity's shape. Can I help you? Ellie must ask, frowning as Mavis skipped along beside him. Some of the people in the street were taking more notice now and were turning to greet the esteemed guild members. I've got nothing on today, so I figured I'd help out the Lame of Winter with whatever job he was up to. The Flame of Winter, Elimas sighed, trying to walk a bit faster. His robes made it difficult, and anyway, wizards were never meant to be seen in a hurry. He could always teleport, but then what was the point of wearing the garb if no one was going to peer eagerly out of their windows to see him? Good morning, Sir Mage, called the blacksmith already at his forge. I'm looking forward to the festival tonight. As am I, Elimas called warmly, raising his staff. Do a spell, Mr. Wizard, squeaked one of the children who had grown weary of the golem and now bounced at Elimas' side, clapping pudgy hands. Elimas grinned. If you wish. He spoke the words quickly and low, then flicked his wrist and the little boy's feet stuck themselves fast to the ground. He squeaked with delight and tugged at each of his legs in turn, trying to free them. The others gathered around him and giggled madly. They all got hold of his arms and tried to pull him out of his boots, but he held fast to the cobblestones. Then the spell broke and the boy came loose like a cork, barreling into his friends so they landed in a heap on top of one another. Peals of laughter filled the street. Now then, stop bothering our wizard! A mother leaned out her door and chided loudly. I'm sorry, Master Fireheart. Elimas dismissed her words with a gesture of his staff. Tis nothing at all, madam. Master Fireheart, the flame of winter, savor of cats and little baby birds, Mavis mocked, skipping backwards in front of him this time. Oh, how everyone loves you. How do they know you're not just some old man with fancy words? Do you ever stop to notice that I am the oldest member of the guild and there might be a reason for that? Elimas countered, trying to step around Mavis, but she just bounced into his path again, her pointed little face alight with cleverness and mischief. Never a good sign. Because you don't do anything but hide behind Maud and her big old shield, Mavis snorted. How old are you anyway? One thousand? Should I be worried you might drop down dead? I'm 71, Elimas snapped, and I go on missions by myself all the time. I thought wizards lived to be thousands of years old in shite, Mavis said, gnawing on a fingernail. Some of us do, if we don't die prematurely from annoyance having to deal with obnoxious druids. Your magic isn't even proper magic, is it? You just say words and snap your fingers. Can't you feel it? The flow, the pulse of magic all around us. Every person, every animal. That doggy over there, he's alive with magic. She waved her hands expressively and almost lost her balance. She moved to walk beside him and stopped her backwards skipping. Small favors, Elimas thought with a grimace. The use of naming and words of power is an ancient and proud tradition, Elimas explained, though he knew it was fruitless. The druid's power was so utterly removed from his that there was no making her see his way of thinking. And she was young and sure of herself. Elimas remembered those days well. Magic was a potent gift to give a young person. And don't you feel the life seething under the very stones we're walking on? Mavis was still talking as she gestured downward. Her eyes flashed and a root bubbled up between two cobbles and nearly tripped Elimas. Put that back! He scolded. People need to walk safely on this street. Mavis huffed and gestured the root back into place. It should go back down for you if you asked it nicely. 
I make it a point never to talk to plants, Elimas huffed. They had reached the edge of the city and one of the smaller gates which would let them out into the farmland, nestled below Heim, like ducklings seeking their mother's protective feathers. He knew he'd soon reach the little farmhouse in need of his aid. Hadn't you better get back to the guild? He asked pointedly, glowering at Mavis. Nope. She laced her fingers behind her back again and grinned in a way that he didn't like. Ellie must curled his lip and trudged on. The roads here were not cobbled, but made of packed earth, so they became slushy with the brown, half-melted snow in no time. The hem of Elimas's robes was already stained. Of course, Mavis danced about in the slop, splashing it all up her leggings. Her golem absorbed some of it, and its legs were soon streaked with white swirls. Elimas tried not to roll his eyes at the childish display. No wonder the druid had no special titles. No one asked her to sign their books or called her to do magic for them. Though, for her part, she did not seem to mind much at all. The farm in need was obvious as soon as Elimas spotted it. A thick, aged tree had taken on too much snow and finally fallen. It had clipped part of the barn and completely taken out a sizable section of fence. The farmer smiled apologetically as the wizard approached. I'm sorry to trouble you, sir, but I knew the tree would make a good addition to the bonfire, and that you could get it back there as quick as you like without having to drag it through town. He took off his cap and played with a loose thread. I just sent for another wizard, but the wife insisted we have the best. No use calling anybody else when we have the spirit namer so close to hand, she said. He smiled shyly. Alimas gave the man an encouraging grin. Of course, sir. Think nothing of it. I'll have this tree removed in no time at all. Annoyingly, Mavis stood to one side, watching with her keen eyes already plotting trouble. So, she asked after a moment, what's the plan? A simple teleportation spell should do the trick, Elima said, pondering the best words in the ancient names of trees. This was a maple, so we couldn't very well use the word for an oak and expect results. He ran his hand through his beard a few times, a common wizardly gesture he knew. The farmer's eyes lit up expectantly. I can move the tree just as well, you know. Mavis said, folding her arms. Having your golem drag it through town is hardly doing better than the farmer and two good oxen might have, Elimas grumbled. She was distracting him from his mental name search. Damn it all, what were maple trees called? Well, that's one way I could move it. I've got options. The druid examined her ragged fingernails with what she must have thought was a smug expression. That's nice, Elimas grumbled ready to reach for his spell book. I could call on the strength of a bear, Mavis said offhandedly. She hunched her back and shambled around, trying to look bear-like. And then I could take the tree into town myself. You could even ride on it if you needed a rest, old man. When the wizard ignored her, Mavis continued. I can also use my own form of teleportation if you like. Or I could call up roots from under the earth to carry the tree underground to- Hush, please! Elimas grouched. The farmer's brows came together with concern. The wizard ran his fingers through the tangle of his beard one last time, then finally recalled the word. He opened his mouth to speak and Mavis interrupted again. Or I could just ask the tree to walk itself. Mavis, please! Elimas snapped, raising his voice more than he intended. She blinked at him several times, then folded her arms. Suit yourself, grumpy. She wrinkled her small nose at him. In truth, the wizard felt bad for shouting, but this was no time to back down from his fleeting moment of authority. Elimas, his focus hanging by a thread, placed his hand on the bark of the tree and spoke its true name, and the word of power which would transport it hence, carried by willing spirits from the world beside the world. A place over which Elimas held some sway, and Mavis with her mud and her walking trees could not understand. In seconds, the tree was gone, leaving behind an indent in the snow and a mess of fence planking. The farmer cheered excitedly and his wife watched from the kitchen window with a wide smile on her face. Elimas made a show of brushing his hands together, letting pulses of spirit power jump between his fingers like tiny sparks of lightning for effect. Mavis made a scoffing sound under her breath. 
Then she waved her hands toward her golem and gestured to the fallen fence. The creature shambled over and began writing posts, driving them back into their place in the frozen earth with little effort. The farmer looked even more pleased. Elimas folded his arms and watched. When the golem had finished, the druid turned to Elimas and gave him a questioning, shall we go, look? Oh, but surely you'll stay for tea, the farmer asked, hopefully. The wife has it fresh brewed inside and the fire's crackling on the hearth. Er, we should probably get back to the... Mavis began. Nonsense, Elimas shot her a quick look. And miss the best part of helping? Mavis wrinkled up her nose again as they followed the farmer towards the house. Elimas explained in low tones. How do you think I got all these fancy titles? It wasn't for doing a magical deed and then disappearing as soon as it was done. I stay around, talk to people. They get to like me, they know they can trust me. If you say so, Mavis mumbled. People aren't like trees, you can't tell what they're feeling. That was nice what you did with the fence posts, Elimas commented. Yeah? Mavis's lips curled into a cat-like grin. So, seeing as I did well, does that mean I get to light the bonfire tonight? No. Lightning, she crowed. The people will love it. No. Elimas was already regretting his praise. Part 3, coming soon.